That dude did something for me, brother. I get emotional talking about it, bro. Like, I really needed it at the time. I love to have Cat Williams in it, bro. I ain't seen Cat Williams in a, since I came home, bro. Cat Williams, bro. Steve Harvey has seemingly retorted to Cat Williams' allegations with a string of what could be described as threats directed at the comedian. Nevertheless, it appears that Cat has garnered support from notable figures like Lil Boozy, who is unwavering in his commitment to defend him. The question looms, what is the true nature of this dispute? At the heart of the Harvey's counteraction lies a robust defense against the implications put forth by Cat Williams. Harvey imparted a warning about the potential deception of eloquence, emphasizing that the skill of articulate expression should not be confused with deceit. Let's get into this. But of course, before we go any further, make sure first that you subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell for more updates and videos like this. Now let's get going. Be careful when you hear something that's laid out to be the truth righteous and negative at the same time if you are a righteous man you will speak as a righteous person that dude did something for me brother i get emotional talking about it bro like i really needed it at the time steve harvey proceeded to delve into the concept of righteousness asserting that a person cannot simultaneously embody righteousness and negativity Concluding his thoughts, he emphasized, when you are listening to anybody trying to make you believe they're anti-Illuminati or anything like this, be very careful because God's voice does not have sin in it. If you are of God speaking from God, you will not engage in anything that's ungodly, period. However, there's a growing perception among many that Harvey's words were a subtle attempt to mock Cat Williams, who recently disclosed his close relationship with God. William shared, I know that's kind of old-fashioned now, but when I was young, that's what I believed. He went on to describe his daily conversations with God, highlighting a relationship built on discussing both triumphs and challenges. Williams expressed a deep understanding of his unique position, acknowledging his blessed state and the ability to manifest positive outcomes by seeking and following divine guidance. This is going to sound really, really weird, but um, I believed at that young age that you could have a relationship with God. In the aftermath of Cat Williams's revealing interview, numerous individuals have stepped forward to vouch for and authenticate his genuine character. Notably, the unyielding hip-hop figure Boozy Badass became visibly moved as he recounted how Cat Williams generously gifted him thousands of dollars right after his release from prison at a time when he was desperately in need. Boozy emotionally shared, I really needed the money at the time, and I wasn't staying anywhere. I mean, I was staying at a hotel with my kids in downtown New Orleans. I didn't even have anywhere to stay yet. And when I was leaving the show, I thought he threw me some weed in the car because it was wrapped up in a towel, but it was $15,000. Did something for me, brother. I get emotional talking about it, bro. Like, I really needed it at the time. Fans who already applauded Williams for his frank interview on Club Shay Shay found renewed admiration after Boozy's heartfelt testimonial regarding the comedian's character. In addition to Lil Boozy, Bernie Mac's daughter also lauded Cat Williams as a true friend to her late father. Reflecting on Cat Williams' recent controversial interview with Shannon Sharp, where he accused Steve Harvey of harboring resentment towards the late comedian, Janice McCullough expressed admiration for Williams, describing him as a stand-up individual. McCullough stated, I just want people to keep in mind that my dad has been gone for 15 years, and I have not been fully immersed in the world of comedy. I don't know. Cat Williams never met him. That's one person I never did get to meet when my dad was alive. But from everything that I've heard my dad say, he always seemed like a stand-up dude. So I have no qualms, no quarrels with him. They know how to sprinkle in just enough truth and wrap it inside their lives. In stark contrast to Cat Williams, Steve Harvey has been perceived as the antithesis with a track record that includes overshadowing fellow comedians alleged theft, and instances of berating his employees. However, the first notable individual Steve Harvey is purported to have wronged is Bernie Mac. The saga unfolds against the backdrop of the groundbreaking comedy tour, The Original Kings of Comedy, which Harvey, along with D.L. Hughley, Cedric the Entertainer, and Bernie Mac embarked on two decades ago, etching their names in the Comedy Hall of Fame. This tour not only shattered box office records, but also set the template for modern comedy shows.
becoming the most successful comedy tour to date. While Harvey was celebrated as the smoothest performer, seamlessly transitioning into television, he was also recognized as the most assertive, targeting front row audience members with remarks about their appearance and careers. Bernie Mac, with his distinct and hard-edged approach, delved into real-life issues with his material, creating a contrast to Harvey's style. Allegedly, Harvey harbored jealousy towards Bernie Mac's approach, sparking a feud that endured for years. Recent revelations by one of the tour's members have thrust this long-standing conflict into the spotlight, causing a buzz on the internet. Be righteous and negative at the same time. If you are a righteous man, you will speak as a righteous person. Persistent rumors surrounding tension between Steve Harvey and the late Bernie Mac during the original Kings of Comedy tour are now being addressed by tour members, including Cedric the Entertainer. Cedric, along with D.L. Hughley, acknowledged the discord between Steve Harvey and Bernie Mac, but emphasized that despite their differences, they managed to navigate through it. However, the conflict extended beyond mere disagreements. In a 2003 interview with GQ magazine, Bernie Mac accused Harvey of harboring jealousy and attempting to undermine him for specific movie roles. In a 2010 interview, Steve Harvey expressed hurt over Mac's allegations which were corroborated by others, including Damon Williams. While Steve Harvey may not have succeeded in allegedly stealing Bernie Mac's spotlight, another comedian, Mark Curry, has accused Harvey of essentially pilfering his career. Mark Curry, known for his role in Hanging with Mr. Cooper, claimed that Harvey stole his comedic material not once, but twice. In an explosive interview with TMZ, Curry revealed that he had confronted Harvey about the issue, asserting that Harvey used his jokes on both The Steve Harvey Show and Kids Say the Darndest Things. Curry expressed frustration, stating, You're taking money out of my pocket. You've made it. You're very wealthy. Stop using my material. Despite addressing the matter with Harvey, Curry claimed that the joke stealing persisted. In an impassioned message directly to the camera, Curry demanded that Harvey cease using his material and urged him to reach out if he wanted to incorporate it properly, saying, if you're going to steal someone's material, at least do it right. He stole my material on his show, so I had a beef on that. On what show? On, when he was on his the, the, the talk show he had, and he did, he, he did all my Halloween material, one Halloween. Mark Curry announced plans for his own comedy special, sparking a dispute with Steve Harvey, known for his clean image. Harvey vehemently denied theft allegations, challenging Curry to specify the alleged stolen joke and dismissing the claims. When Curry mentioned little big shots, Harvey incredibly responded, urging Curry to grow up and questioning the legitimacy of the accusation. Harvey emphasized his clean record and frustration with the situation maintaining a dismissive tone throughout. Steve Harvey not only discredited Mark Curry, but also accused him of making unfounded claims and fabricating stories. Additionally, persistent rumors about the well-known mustached comedian's treatment of his staff have circulated. Harvey's conduct came under scrutiny when, following his talk show's relocation to Los Angeles, he allegedly sent a memo to his new staff with demands typically reserved for tour writers. This memo obtained by Chicago blogger Robert Federer in May 2017 outlined strict rules for accessing Harvey's dressing room. It stated, There will be no meetings in my dressing room. No stopping by or popping in. No one. Do not come to my dressing room unless invited. Do not open my dressing room door. If you open my door, expect to be removed. Harvey's security team was instructed to prevent anyone with the intent to see or speak to him from standing at his door without an appointment. The thing with Steve Harvey was is that he used his, my material on both his platforms. Yeah. After I talked to him, I saw him at Def Jam, I went up and talked to him, I said, man, you're using my material. Harvey defended his actions, claiming he sought more personal time during the day and arguing that the memo aimed to address the lenient open-door policy permitted during his show's run in Chicago. In a subsequent discussion with Entertainment Tonight, he reiterated his stance, explaining, I'm in my makeup chair. They walk in the room. I'm having lunch. They walk in. They don't knock. I'm in the hallway. I'm getting ambushed by people with friends that come to the show and having me sign this and do this. I just said, wait a minute. And in hindsight, I probably should have handled it a little bit differently. 
getting sick of this right here. Yeah. Mark Curry need to grow up. Steve Harvey ain't been on stage since 2015. But well, he said you used him on one of your shows. Ask Mark Curry what joke he talking about. In November 2015, Steve Harvey, the author of Think Like a Man, faced a lawsuit alleging that he reneged on plans to lease a private jet after more than $400,000 worth of renovations had been initiated, reportedly at his request. The requested modifications included custom carpet, a reconfiguration of the interior cabin from 16 seats to 14 seats, custom seat design, and new upper and lower cabin sidewalls, according to TMZ. Although Harvey settled the lawsuit, he later sued the Federal Aviation Title Company about a year later, seeking to recover the $250,000 he had placed in escrow for the private jet lease. With a series of legal matters and allegations against him, including issues with private jet leases and accusations of mistreatment towards staff, doubts have emerged about whether Steve Harvey aligns with the public perception of his character. The accumulation of controversies has led some to question whether Harvey may not be the person they believed him to be. That's all for today. We hope you enjoyed that video, and if you did, make sure to hit like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more videos like this.